Radar Update. My name is Daniel Vallis and welcome to our channel. Thank you so much for your prayers. It means so much to me and this ministry. I need strength. I need wisdom. And it is incredible to see and be able to tell when you are praying for me. The Lord gives incredible wisdom and strength and liberty. And the Lord directs with wisdom on how to present and what to talk about and brings things to mind. It is so incredible to see the way the Lord is working when we all pray and when we desire to hear from the Lord, when we desire to have understanding from the Lord. And when we go before the throne of grace and ask for it, He gives it. Those who pray for this ministry are a vital part of this ministry work and what the Lord is doing. And I just want to say thank you again for your prayers. It means so much to me and to this ministry work. I have updated the timeline on the Google Drive. So let's review some of what is going on right now. The peace and safety sign is still ongoing. We have seen the first part. We are waiting for the sudden destruction part. And it appears that that is coming very soon. But this is definitely one of the early prophetic warnings that we were told about that we saw over a year ago. And we still see it in play and the timing appears to be very soon with that. We see the Shiloh sign ongoing. That's going to be valid until April 7th when the lawgiver declares the new boundary. And we also see the sign of the Son of Man starting early on right now in the initial stages of it. We talked about that a lot in our last video. It's still early on in the pregnancy rehearsal and there's some incredible events that Christ said would happen later on as it starts to get more toward the travailing part. So that is ongoing at the moment. And right now the Paris Middle East Conference is ongoing. It's going to go from January 15th through the 21st and there's a variety of other channels talking about it more in depth and more focused on that subject. But that is an important prophetic marker that we're also told to look at and consider when we see events surrounding Israel and the nations, how they're reacting to it. And especially with them considering peace in the larger prophetic context that we see right now too. Very important threshold here. And it certainly sets the stage and makes the world receptive to wanting a peace solution, some type of covenant. And on the 20th, we see the USA Trump inauguration. That's going to be a very interesting event. There's a lot of speculation about disruptions and all that. So it's going to be interesting and full surprises, no matter what happens with that. And on the 13th and 14th of January, we pass the end of a third watch based on 12 months. So we have just passed the first of two markers that we were looking at. When we talked about this before, we did not know exactly how to figure it. 12 months is the normal biblical pattern, but this year does have 13 months because it's intercalculated. So yesterday we just passed the end of the third watch based on 12 months. And now we have one more in front of us. And here's the math that I did yesterday. The end of the third watch would approximately be on February 5th. That would be the end of a third watch based on 13 months. And so that's in not too many days from now either. So right now we're in between two milestones that we had been looking at and are still looking at telling us that time is running out. So amidst all the other prophetic things we see in the geopolitical events, so much is telling us that time is running out. And we're in a prime time right now on multiple prophetic levels of when we are expecting our Redeemer to return to pick up the purchased possession. And we also talked about our learning journey from when the first Star Bethlehem Echo Reminders were seen and that started us on our perfect journey of looking into the celestial heavens and signs and everything that was coming together a lot more. That is when our journey started. And back on December 30th, that was when our journey marked one year, six months, so a year and a half, which is right around what many see the wise men's journey to be. And... On the 29th of January, our journey will be one year, seven months. So we're still right in the prime time of the biblical pattern of the wise men with their journey. We know it was comfortably under two years for the complete journey from the very first time that the star appeared to when they arrived in Jerusalem. And so to see this pattern in the midst of all the prophetic events further reminds us of so many patterns that we are looking as we diligently seek the king as well. And it caught my attention that in a few days, right at the exact time as the approximate end of the third watch, Jupiter is also going to be reaching Station 1 about February 6th. And Station 1 is when it appears to just stop for approximately two weeks. That's basically when it visually appears to stop as it turns and starts its retrograde motion. But it's going to appear to be stopped in the same spot in the sky for about two weeks. 
really peaking around the 6th. But it just caught my attention that it's right at the exact same time as the approximate end of the third watch, February 5th. Very interesting end marker of how we could see time-wise, but then a celestial marker as well, where Jupiter is actually appearing to stop. And the last time Jupiter was at station was at station 2 back shortly after it was at opposition. So it's been going on a straight course since then, and this is going to be the first time that it's going to stop since that station 2. And it should catch our attention even more when we consider that in context with the wise men's journey. Because the Bible alludes to this exact same celestial event marking the end of the wise men's journey. You remember in Matthew chapter 2 verse 7, Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Okay, so think about this for a minute. They are just past Jerusalem, and they suddenly see the star, which they saw quite a while ago. They are now seeing it stand over where the young child was. They saw it stopped over the town of Bethlehem from their perspective. And that was at the end of their journey. So this should catch our attention when we see this reminder of this pattern which we've been looking at. We are reminded how the star stopped right when they are reaching the end of their journey. And for us to see it at the approximate end of the third watch should also catch our attention too. Doesn't mean it's going to come at that time, but it definitely forms a marker, a bookend, particularly of the time when we are looking and have high expectation of meeting the king. Particularly because we are told specifically to have the expectation and to look for his return in the second or third watch. Luke 12, 34, we've talked about this before, about how Christ told his disciples that when he returns, he wants us to have our loins girded about. He wants us to be living, ready to leave. The idea of having already severed the apron strings of our heart from this world, to be ready to go, to be living in light of eternity, and to have our lights burning, to be shining bright for Christ so that he can be seen in our life, so that the fruit of the Spirit can be seen in our life. This is how Christ wants to find us when he returns. And he gives the example of a boss who goes away to an event where he doesn't quite know exactly what time he's coming back because there may be different obligations. But his servants expect him around the time frame and they're just going to stay up late and keep the porch light on because they know about when he's coming back. And Jesus told his disciples and he's telling us, this is how I want you to be looking for me when I return. You won't know the day or hour, but you're going to have a very good idea when I'm coming back. And so I want you to be ready to go, your light's burning, when I come back. I want to find you expecting me to come back and living accordingly. And he goes into verse 37, Blessed are those servants. And the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. There are blessings that are only for those who are watching for their Lord to return. For those servants who are living as though their Lord is returning. Who are shining bright. He says, blessed are those servants. And friend, I want you to be blessed. And this is why we watch. Because there are great blessings. And the greatest blessing is to meet our beloved. Our bridegroom. Our redeemer. And he wants to find us watching when he returns. Verse 38. He emphasizes. And if he shall come in the second watch. Or come in the third watch. And find them so. Blessed are those servants. So he's telling his disciples, there is an expectation, very high expectation, that he is going to come back in his second or third watch. And he's going to be looking for what servants are looking for the Lord to return in those specific time periods. And this also goes with the Jewish wedding model concept too as well. The bridegroom would typically come around midnight. And the second watch is the first three hours before midnight. And the third watch is the three hours after midnight. So it's a time frame that fits with the Jewish wedding model. And he wants us to watch and even gives us a very good idea of a time frame pattern to be looking and expecting him. And he says those servants who are watching and found looking in the second watch or the third watch, those servants who are watching will be blessed. So we have to keep this into consideration. This is why we've been trying to find out the second watch or the third watch. Because there is a blessing for those that watch for those periods. 
And he concludes by saying, Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. He's not coming at a typical hour and a typical watch time that you think of. He's coming at a different time, but he wants us to look and he wants us to diligently seek out what he's talking about. But he always emphasizes, Be ye therefore ready also. Have your loins girded about and your lights burning. Be ready. Examine yourself. Make yourself ready now. So we've been looking at the second watch and the third watch, and we find ourselves in the tail end of the third watch, a period which we are told to look for him and to have an expectation of the Son of Man returning. Now another important reminder pattern that we just passed was the New Year for Trees. It's on the calendar, and it's when the almond trees start blooming, and it's considered the start of spring in Israel. But it is very strongly associated with the replanting of Israel. And this is also very important tied to the Paris Peace Conference we see going on right now. And this is the time when the almond trees start blooming. And it's the very first trees that start blooming. And so they picked this as the mark of the accounting year for determining the first fruits of the tree fruits. But this is the time of year in January when the almond trees start flowering. And you can find a few references in the news even right now that this is the time. The calendar is correct. It is following the agricultural cycle. This is one reason why we use this calendar. But it's interesting when we consider that the word almond in the Bible, it means to be alert, to be sleepless, hence to be on the lookout, to wake and to watch. And the almond is associated with awakening and watching. And this is a timely reminder when we consider the time where we are at right now. We were called to be watching for the Lord's return. We see an agricultural reminder that's even mentioned in Scripture of the trees budding and putting forth leaves. We see this reminder of when that is considered to start from the Hebrew perspective. We see that right here at this time, reminding us we should be watching even more so at this time. We should be waking up even more so at this time. We should be alert even more so at this time. Be vigilant at this time. We have so many reminders telling us we should be waking up. We should be expecting our Lord to return. Romans 13, 11, and that knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep. We have the almond trees even reminding us that they are awakening out of their dormancy right now. We are also reminded to awake out of our sleep. When we know the time, it's time to wake up. It's time to watch, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. When we know the time, we should be waking up. We should be examining our life. We should be trimming our lamp. We should be casting off the works of darkness. We should be putting on the armor of light. We should be making sure our lamps are burning brightly. But the critical step that is needed is we need to wake up to the reality of what time it is. We need to wake up and to watch and to be vigilant. And we're reminded in Matthew 24 where Jesus told his disciples, Disciples, these are the signs of my coming. This is what I really want you to look for. And the very first thing he emphasized was the fig tree and all the trees, as he mentions in Luke, of when they start putting forth their leaves, when they start blooming. And this is where we are. And he even tells them, when you see that sign, that tells you that something is coming up, that summer is nigh. So likewise, ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. So right now we even have an agricultural reminder that even Jesus referenced in regard to his return for his disciples. And he told them, this is what I want you to look for. This is what I want you to pay attention to. I want you to watch because you do not know what hour your Lord doth come. You don't know what hour he's coming back at. It's going to be some time, some hour in a second or third watch. Watch, therefore, in those watches. Awake like the trees that bloom and put forth. You are going to know that the Son of Man is drawing nigh and is even at the doors. Watch, wake up, live accordingly, and let your lamps be burning brightly when he returns. Be a wise virgin, be the wise bride, be a wise sheep, be like the wise men. Be the wise and faithful servants. And God used the picture of the Owen also with Jeremiah in regard to prophecy. Jeremiah 1.11 Moreover the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. 
Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. God is faithful and true. And he was telling Jeremiah, Jeremiah, see the picture of the almond tree, how it wakes up, how it is alert, and how it hastens to bloom before everything else does. Jeremiah just liked that picture. My prophecy, what I say is going to come true, even though it looks dormant, even though it looks like it's not doing anything for a while, I will hasten my word to perform it, and it will bloom one day, and it will bloom quickly. It will awake. He says, I will hasten my word to perform it. What God says will be performed, and he likens it to an almond branch, and how the Hebrew people were well familiar with how it bloomed early and quickly. And so we have this reminder right now in the plant world, on top of the celestial signs, on top of the geopolitical signs, a earthly sign reminding us that God will perform his word and he will hasten to perform it. And so we find ourselves in a watch time of expectation where we are expecting the son of man to return for his watching servants. And we are reminded to watch, to awake, to rise up. And in this time window between the third watches, There is also a scripture reading about the redemption half shekel, which we covered before. And this memorial was instituted early on to remind the people of Israel that they were a redeemed people. And not to forget, they were redeemed. The events of Exodus and Passover, they were a redeemed people. In Exodus 30, which is going to be read soon, reminds them that this is a memorial, that they were ransomed, they were atoned. This is their atonement money. It's a memorial. It's a token to remind them they were a redeemed people. And we see this reminder of redemption coming up very soon. And this is the picture we've been looking at. The whole picture that we have been atoned. We have been ransomed. We have been redeemed. We are the sons of God by adoption because he has ransomed us. He has redeemed us. And the more that we remember what he has done for us till he comes, the clearer picture we will have of what we should be looking for. And it should catch our attention that this passage, Exodus 30, is going to be read in a few days. And we saw this picture at the start of our journey, particularly with the Shiloh sign, how it started with Jupiter in opposition right a few hours before the Atonement Memorial was collected in Christ's time. It was collected at the temple on the first of the year. And so we noted early on the strong connection with the idea of redemption and Passover and the Lamb of God who came to shed his blood on our behalf. We saw all these pictures of redemption tied to this sign, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, and how he is going to come back one day to pick up his redeemed and ransomed people. And it should catch our attention that here we are nearing the latter half of the third watch, and we find another reminder of the redemption memorial and token reminding us that we are redeemed. Our bride price has been paid. We are expecting the bridegroom to return sometime in the second or third watch. And that's in several days, but right in this time window of a wise man's journey and so many signs coming together when we are expecting the Son of Man to return. This is an incredibly powerful time when we have so many reasons to watch, to wake up, to have our lamps burning brightly, to have our loins girt about, to be ready to go living as though the Son of Man is returning. And like the wise men, we are diligently looking for him and we have high expectation to meet him very soon. I was reminded of the wise men's journey. We've covered this so many times and every time that I get down or tired or weary, I always remember the wise men on their journey. You know, we have it very easy compared to the wise men. We're not traveling on camels for weeks and months and we're not paying for a whole entourage to travel for all that time there and back too. When you think about it, we have it easy. We're watching these videos on our couch, you know, on the computer. We have it very easy. We have different areas that affect us in our own personal lives and decisions. But comparatively, we have nothing to complain about, really. They went forward in faith on what they did know, and they got more wisdom as they went forward. But I was thinking, you know, we have Jupiter coming to Station 1 here very soon, at the beginning of February, which is also going to be the end of the third watch based on 13 months. And when we compare that to the wise men's journey, when did they see that? They saw that after they had left Jerusalem and they were heading toward Bethlehem. That's when their journey ended. And I was just thinking on our journey, on our wise men's journey, on our learning journey, what is our destination? What are we looking for? The wise men went to Jerusalem first, and that was their natural guesstimate to go there first, the city of the Lion of the tribe of Judah. But then they eventually went to Bethlehem, and that's where they saw the star again. 
On our learning journey, where is our destination, though? What are we looking for? Are we looking for Bethlehem, or are we looking for Jerusalem? Think about that for a moment. Does it make a difference what we are looking for? Yes. As disciples of Christ, as servants of Christ, we already know the Bethlehem picture has been completed. The Son of Man came. He's not going to be born again. So what are we looking for? We're not looking for a Bethlehem picture. We're looking for Jerusalem. We're looking for a new Jerusalem. We are looking for the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And so in a sense, we should have the expectation of meeting the King, the Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, before the Bethlehem picture. We are tired. We are exhausted. We are very fatigued. Yes, it's been a long journey, but it's exactly the same time as the wise men's journey. Our journey in many ways has been easier than theirs, but it still has been tiring and wearying. But I am often reminded that the wise men had their greatest disappointment right before they met the king. And so we always have to keep that in mind of going forward in faith of what we do know, the direction God gives us, not to be dismayed by our emotions, by our lack of strength. We can ask the Lord for strength and grace. We can ask him to help our unbelief, to give us grace to go forward in the areas that we need to go forward in, to go forward in faith, to diligently seek him, knowing that we are very close and there are so many signs that we are to watch and to be ready and have the expectation of meeting him and to press forward, to go forward in faith with the expectation of meeting the king. We are looking for a new Jerusalem, and we know our bridegroom has gone to prepare a place for us, and he will return one day to pick up his purchased possession, to take us to the new Jerusalem. 